Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you and a pleasure to be back in Pittsburgh. Um, we're going to start with an arrangement of a tune from South Pacific by Rogers and Hammerstein. This is called A Wonderful Guy.
Thank you. Um, so uh, this next tune is an arrangement of a standard by um, the great pianist Thelonious Monk, and usually it's played in 4-4, but we added a couple beats to it. Um, so this is our version of Straight Note Chaser.
Thank you. So uh, that was a tune by Thelonious Monk. And, you know, Monk was actually really good friends with Mary Lou Williams. Um, and in the late 40s and early 1950s, Williams would have these salons at her apartment in Harlem and different bebop musicians, including Monk, who had met her in Kansas City, um, came over to basically play their tunes for her. And Monk actually said that certain of his pieces he wouldn't play in public until Mary Lou said that they were good enough. So um, they have a really strong tie. Um, this next tune is uh, an arrangement of a standard. And I like doing a lot of things like reharmonizing standard hymn tunes and jazz standards that sometimes I, I hear them done in sort of just very straight ahead ways where I hear the text. This just happens to me all the time because I just love um, lyrics. And I hear text and sometimes tempos don't match the feel of the text to me or chords don't really bring out the flavor of the text. And uh, this is one of those particular tunes where I tried to create an arrangement that really brought out the text. So this is uh, my arrangement of all or nothing at all.
charm I would be caught Caught in the undertow So you see I've got to say So uh, for my last recording, which uh, Daniel Scott and I did together, um, about two years ago, I did a recording called Makes the Heart to Sing. And the subtitle is Jazz Hymns. And there's some debate about what jazz hymns are. Um, but rather than go into that, it's, it's so hard to label music, you know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but I have uh, worked initially when I moved to New York 20, two years ago. Um, I moved from Chicago with a full-time Episcopal church music job, and part of the reason um, I had wanted to be in New York, but part of what attracted me about this particular church I was at called All Angels is that um, they actually advertised the job position in a magazine called uh, Image, Image Journal. It's a journal of art and religion that still exists. There's like reproductions of paintings from contemporary artists and poets and writers and once in a while musicians, um, not too much, but I had never seen a job description in this journal. And they said they wanted a composer, so, uh, and someone who played a lot of styles of music, because they had a gospel choir, and I thought, wow, that's unusual in the Episcopal Church. Um, but I wrote two mass settings for them there, and then started doing um, some different uh, hymn arrangements that I've continued to do at churches uh, where I've worked or visited. Um, so I had enough for a collection, and so on this recording, we took really standard tunes like Holy, 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 um, or Ode to Joy, which we sang here this morning, or All Creatures of Our God and King, which we're going to play for you next, and basically, we would just invite congregations to open their hymnal and sing with us. We're actually, we're not going to ask you to sing with us on, on this particular one, but it really people are surprised how well it works. And then I wrote out piano scores because we'd start going on the road in churches and music directors wanted the sheet music. So now, I think last count, I've had about 245 uh, church music directors um, download the music from my website for, for this. So it's really, you know, it's great, it's catching on. But most of the arrangements are pretty much uh, meant for open your hymnal or look at the screen and you just sing the tune. We're gonna do the one tune on the record that is the most syncopated, um, that's a little bit changed. So uh, this is my arrangement of All Creatures of Our God and King.
Thank you. Um, so another thing uh, that I did while I was at this particular church in New York was um, I started writing a couple of mass settings, which is uh, something um, that Mary Lou Williams has also done. And we're going to play just a couple of brief excerpts um, from what I called my evening mass because we had two services in the morning, one in the evening. So I wrote a mass setting that we primarily used at the morning services and one at the evening. And the evening uh, service was the service that had a gospel choir. So what we did was um, the choir learned uh, the different parts of the mass first, and then we, we taught them to the congregation and pretty much did it without printed music. So what we're going to do for you is the uh, Kyrie, the Lord have mercy, and the Sanctus, holy, holy, holy.
So this next uh, piece is something that I wrote when uh, I was working on a big band arrangement for a tiny college in the middle of Iowa somewhere. Um, I was coming out to be a guest artist and I, I just kept getting stuck on the first four chords uh, and melody that I, I was writing for this particular arrangement. And at the time, um, I had been kind of meditating a lot on uh, this New Testament story where um, the guy formerly known as Saul has this conversion experience and the story goes that he basically um, kind of meets the divine on, on the road and is blinded by the divine, falls off a horse and um, his whole life kind of changes after that and uh, um, he becomes, yeah, he becomes St. Paul. Um, but anyway, that's a story you can just go and read. Um, but I started just wondering what it might have felt like to have been so overcome by God or by the divine that you're blinded. Um, and at the time, I was also feeling like um, every day just felt really long and not in a good way long, like you're doing fun stuff all day that you like. Just it was sort of like the time just felt long. Um, so there's another phrase somewhere in scripture, I can't remember where, that talks about the length of days. Um, and so I kind of put those two things together. Um, so this is called, uh, and it's also the title track of one of my recordings, it's called Length of Days. Seeing nothing but the night Heart is anxious It is spinning round This confusion I must fight But I'm tired You have stripped me down I am naked in your light And it's so blinding That I'm on the ground And your love now feels like night A passing face just won't pass The length of days In a looking glass
just waiting when I can't sit still and these walls are closing bring your movement to this little town show me where I keep changing the set list order, um, but that's okay. Cause see, we're reading from these fancy iPads where we can just like move everything around, and it's supposed to look seamless. It usually doesn't work. Um, so uh, about a year ago, well, actually, we the three of us played. I had a commission to write a um, a two part piece for a a girls uh, a fourth and fifth grade girls choir in Greenwood, South Carolina. Um, and uh, we performed there last uh, February on their concert series. And then I wrote a piece for the church's adult choir. And then I wrote a piece for a girl's choir called Palmetto Girls Sing. And the director knew that I had done a lot of work with um, doing arrangements of jazz hymns or of hymns. And she said, you know, could you do an, either an arrangement or write a new tune for His Eyes on the Sparrow? And I thought, well, that's a really well-known tune. And there's probably... 552 choral arrangements of the piece. Um, so why don't I write a new tune for it? So uh, this is basically what I wrote for the girls to sing, and they did a really amazing job. You can actually go to YouTube or go to my website, and you can um, you can watch them performing this with us. Um, but the whole idea behind the arrangement of, of this uh, was was the part of the tune that says, I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free. So I won't be able to sing both parts at the same time, but when you go to my website, you go to deannajazz.com, you can, you can hear them.
Thank you. So at the end, the girls have like this three-part build-up, and it's it's very fun. Um, so it's I think they really enjoyed doing that piece, and hopefully it will be keep keep getting done a lot more. Um, so we're gonna do a, a couple of Mary the Williams tunes now. You know, one thing that was really um, important to me about 20 years ago is when I kind of uh, started listening to Mary the Williams, and it was because. Um, the late Dr. Billy Taylor, the great jazz pianist who was really good friends with Mary Lou, had invited me to bring my band to play at the Kennedy Center at the Mary Lou Williams uh, Women in Jazz Festival, now now just called the Mary Lou Williams Festival. And this was in like 2000. And uh, I really didn't know much of uh, Williams's music. I knew who she was, and I really think this is still kind of the tragic fate of many <laughs> jazz musicians and just many just people in general who know her name but don't really know um, many of her pieces. And uh, so 
at the time, there had been a new biography that had come out about her uh, called Morning Glory. And I read that whole biography cover to cover. And while I was reading it, um, I had a, a friend named Dave Douglas who had just put out a recording, a tribute recording to to Williams. And um, I contacted him and said, what recordings should I check out first? So he kind of emailed me a list. And then I just started listening. And then as I'm reading this book, I found out, wow, she wrote three jazz masses and um, a big part of her story um, that I'm writing about in this biography for a Catholic publisher um, that's going to be called Mary Lou Williams Music for the Soul coming out in January of 2021 is her conversion story, uh, her conversion to Catholicism at um, the age of 47 and kind of just the community uh, that she was really uh, surrounded by um, she had a lot of, I've read hundreds of letters between her and different um, priests, many Jesuit priests and women religious nuns who she would go on retreats in upstate New York. And um, I really truly believe that her relationships with these people really uh, were a big source of encouragement and friendship for the last uh, 25 years of her life and a really important part of her story that doesn't get told very much. Um, but... Uh, since I had already, when I discovered her, I had written uh, my first jazz mass setting, and I thought, wow, I really have to, you know, get into her music more. So, anyway, that's how my journey with Mary Lou started, and um, I keep discovering more and more, so, which is why I'm here for two months, basically starting this weekend, to keep researching. I, I moved from New York for two months. Um, and uh, so right now we're going to play a couple of her pieces. Some of these are really short. Um, but this first one is something that she first recorded in 1946. It was actually with an all-female uh, um, quartet, and Mary Lou was not very big on that idea, um, neither am I, um, to pick people based on what they look like or what their gender is or anything. Um, but Leonard Feather, who was a big jazz critic and producer, had he really championed uh, women jazz musicians um, in the 40s and 50s and really tried to help get some of their careers going when they couldn't get recording contracts or things. So Leonard Feather actually sponsored this recording session. Um, and on it, she did this really interesting tune that it's almost like a bridge between um, Boogie Woogie and Bebop, um, and even just when it was recorded. So you can kind of hear elements of, of the two. You hear sort of like the boogie in the, in the bass line, and you hear some of the lines that are getting really chromatic, approaching bebop, but it's also in a waltz feel. So uh, it's called Waltz Boogie.
So it's really interesting. A couple weeks ago, I was in Chicago, and I spent a day at uh, Columbia College there at their Center for Black Music Research. And I went there because uh, trombonist Melma, Melba Liston, who um, was a really great arranger and composer and played in Dizzy Gillespie's big band for quite a while, um, arranged a lot of Mary Lou's music through the years. And I found a score there that I haven't heard the recording to, but that piece was arranged for like um, two C flutes, alto flute, bass flute, bass clarinet, and piano, and I would really love to hear that um, sometime. So now we're gonna uh, we're gonna stay kind of in the same period. This was actually a year before um, Waltz Boogie, so this was in 1945. Uh, Mary Lou uh, wrote a piece that she recorded. Um, with her trio, a suite of music based on the signs of the zodiac, and she dedicated each movement to different musicians born under that sign. And I also found this this is really interesting because again, I've seen nothing about this in, in the other biographies or anywhere. Um, Melba Liston also arranged; she had arranged some of these pieces for Dizzy's big band when Mary Lou kind of had a um, comeback. She stopped playing for about two years from 1950. <laughs> or 55 to 57, and then in 57 she played at the uh, Newport Jazz Festival with Dizzy, and that was kind of her uh, supposed comeback to uh, the live music scene, and Melba Liston had arranged one of the pieces we're gonna play for you now, um, but she also arranged for a record that never happened for Monk to play the whole Zodiac Suite. Uh, Melba Liston did no, started an arrangement and in every single folder, uh, Melba had written out characteristics of each sign, I think, to inform her arrangement. So there was like two of the files where I found full arrangements, but the rest, they weren't complete. Um, so another interesting project. Um, but we're going to play for you. Uh, Mary Lou wrote the Zodiac Suite for her trio. She later did it with a chamber orchestra. Um, New Year's Eve in 1945 in Town Hall and then did it with um, a larger uh, Philharmonic in New York in 46. This is from the trio version. We're going to do two movements, Aries and Taurus.
So I would encourage you to uh, check out as much of Mary Lou Williams' music as you can. I have a whole page on my website with a lot of listening um, examples and things. And when the book comes out, we're also going to be putting a listening guide online. But there's just, there's so much. Her, her breadth is really amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, when I was here in, in June, I did a trio concert at uh, Alphabet City at City of Asylum, and we just did like an hour and a half of her music, which really only scratches the surface. So we barely put a pebble in the bucket, whatever. And speaking of pebbles and buckets, I wasn't planning this, <laughs> but we're going to have a free will um, offering, which means, you know, you can hopefully not put pebbles in there, but. Um, uh, to help defray some of the expenses. It's really been wonderful to um, be here. And uh, so as the offertory is happening, um, we are going to do, I'm just changing everything around. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a, a hymn arrangement, another one. Um, this is something we played this morning, but I know not everyone was here this morning. <laughs> um, so this is an Irish tune. Um, that's often sung with a text, uh, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, and, uh, or excuse me, a Welsh tune, and uh, the title of that tune is called Hyperdall.
going to play two more pieces for you. Um, and uh, this next one, so this is something that actually is just kind of adapted for a trio format. So um, I spent, well, I've been to Brazil about four times now, and I play a lot of Brazilian music, and I, I speak Brazilian Portuguese, and um, I did an artist residency on a little island called Itaparica in Bahia, Brazil, last year for two months. Um, and that's for a project that I had to kind of put on hold while <laughs> doing the Mary Lou Williams biography, but I'm going to be writing a piece called the Nossa Senhora Suite, and Nossa Senhora is Our Lady. So I was interviewing Brazilian women um, who have devotion to Mary, to Our Lady, and uh, asking them kind of specific questions just about how they see um, Mary in their life because they have devotion to her. And so each movement of the suite is going to be for a different Brazilian uh, Mary that I'm writing for four singers in my group. Um, and that will be something that we're planning to record in 2021. Um, but I had a choral piece that was due um, while I was in Bahia. And uh, I, I knew that I wanted it to be something um, that had to do with this project. And so while I, w I was there, um, I was just feeling I had a certain point where, you know, you're in a foreign country for a really long time. And even if you speak the language, um, sometimes just traveling is lonely. And I just had this sense of there, you know, the concept of mother or Mary or both, they kind of get conflated together is just so present in the culture and popular culture and religious culture and everything. So I kind of, I wrote this poem, um, my first original Portuguese poem, um, and it takes words uh, from the Ave Maria in Portuguese, which is cheia de graça, full of grace. And I use that as a starting point um, and wrote this choral piece that got premiered a few days after I came back and went to California for that premiere. So that's another piece you can hear on my website, but I wanted to just take it and adapt it for trio. So basically, what the lyrics kind of say are, um, Blessed Mother full of grace, help this traveler who, like you, is a stranger far, far, far from her country. Stay close to me when I'm, I'm translating here as I'm looking at the Portuguese. Stay close to me um, when I feel alone. Uh, light my path when I don't know where to walk and when I don't know where to go. Full of grace, full of strength and force, give me your open heart to see beauty, to hear music, to feel your love. So this is called, in Portuguese, it's called Oração da Viajante, which means the traveler's prayer.
Thank you. So before we do our last piece, if you could please uh, give a round of applause for Daniel Foose on the bass. <laughs> and Scott Latsky on the drums. So while I'm actually going to be staying here for a while, uh, Daniel and Scott are driving all the way back to New York um, after the concert. So you can send them some traveling mercies. Um, and I'd also uh, like to thank uh, Tim and Wayne who helped us with setup and did such a great job with sound. And of course, uh, thanks to Pastor Randy Bush for having us. And yes. Um, I really, um, it's, it's very, you know, it's hard for me to even express. Uh, I had not really been in Pittsburgh at all uh, up until, um, I'm not counting times when I was here for a night and wasn't playing. So I uh, first time I was really here was last December. And this is the fourth time I've, I've been here uh, for performances since December. And it's really just been amazing. I mean, I got to play with the Pittsburgh Symphony in March doing Mary Lou music and um, played my first concert was at uh, the Hillman Center out in Fox Chapel doing a whole Chopin uh, Brazilian program. And um, lecturing about Mary Lou's sacred music at Pitt on like six hours notice and uh, teaching on her for the Catholic Diocese for a bunch of their teachers, um, school teachers for three days in June. And it's really just to me, part of the reason I'm here, it's not just to research Mary Lou, but it's really just to be in your uh, very welcoming city for a time. So um, as Pastor Bush said this morning, if you have suggestions for me, like places I should go eat, or go hear music. I think I, I have a lot of the music places figured out, but I'm always happy to know more things I should see. Um, please, you know, let me know. And we will have a, um, we also will have a CD table and things over this way in this hallway, and I'll be over there, so I'm happy to talk to any of you. But I think that Pastor Bush wanted to say something too, right? So with that, we're going to play one more piece for you, and this is something we often close with. Um, this is my arrangement of a Cole Porter standard, and this is called Just One of Those Things.
Daniel Foos, Scott Lansky, Deanna Lukowski.